Let's see how we can locate data within a file where the start and end of the data are not predictable. In other words, they don't start on the same row or end on the same row. Here's the data file with 27 transactions. Now there's some header information at the top that I don't want. So the heading row of the data actually starts on line 18 and it goes all the way down to line 45. But maybe this is not consistent from file to file. Here's a similar file that has 346 transactions, but its header row starts on line eight and the final row of the table ends on 354. So let's come up with a way to locate the start of the data and the end of the data, regardless of how much garbage information there is before or after the data set. Be sure to download the test files, here the one with 27 transactions, and here the one with 346 transactions, so you can follow along with me to do this at the same time, or just go into the solution file and look at the M code. There are several ways to solve this problem, but I'm gonna show you the one that I like the most. We'll start by going up to data, and then launch Power Query by connecting to a text or CSV file. So let's start with the file called fewer sales. Since this is an unstructured data source, we get our preview and we can check to make sure that it's choosing the correct delimiter. Let's go ahead and send this into Power Query. Now let's first look at the way a lot of people solve this problem, but they do it statically. And then we'll really be able to appreciate the dynamic solution. So I look at this information and the data starts on row 18. So a lot of people would go up here and say, remove rows, remove top rows, and we'll get rid of the top 17 rows. Now, if we scroll down, the last row is row 28. So we either need to get rid of the last two rows or keep the top 28 rows. Now, you might be thinking it's probably better to get rid of the last two rows. That way, if I do have more records, this solution's at least a little bit dynamic. And I agree. So we'll go to remove rows, remove bottom rows, and say remove the bottom two rows. That will have located the data. We could then do something like promote the header rows, set the data types, all that stuff. But then as you've already figured out, if the data doesn't exactly start on row 18, then we're going to have a problem. So I'm going to remove all those steps after the source. So what we'll do is we'll try to find something in the data that identifies the first row. Well, for me, it's this word sales representative. So if that's a constant where in column one, that heading will only occur one time throughout the data, then we can use that as a flag or like a marker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, get rid of every row that says sales representative. Now I know that sounds weird, but bear with me. So I'm gonna go up here to filter, text filter, and I say, I don't want any rows that equal sales representative. I hit okay, and that row just disappeared. Now I didn't really want to make that row disappear, but the code that it wrote is actually almost perfect because all we have to do is change this from a table.selectRows function to a table.skip function. I'll hit check, and that basically says skip every row that is not equal to sales representative. Well, if we look at the previous step, that's going to skip the first 17 rows, and as soon as it hits sales rep, it's going to stop. So with that one change at table.skip, we've now dynamically discovered the beginning of our data. Now it's time to dynamically discover the end of the data. Well, just like we use the word sales representatives as sort of a marker to say this is the beginning of the data, I'm going to use that same idea with the words total sales. So if total sales always is at the end of that first column, then I want to find everything up to those words and then discard everything that comes after it. Now, if you don't have a total row at the end of your data with some identifiable label, then we could just search for the first blank row. Searching for the first blank row would also work if you have no blank rows at the end of the data, like the last record is the end of the data. So what we'll do is we'll go up and perform a keep rows, keep top rows function. Now, what we'll do is feed it a temporary value, and this can be any value you want. I'll just type in five, hit OK, and we kept the top five rows. This M code is almost perfect, it just needs a little tweaking. We're going to replace that statically declared five with a little bit of logic. So we'll say for each row in column one, we'll keep everything that is not equal to, and then in double quotes, total sales. So we'll keep the first N number of records in column one until we hit the words total sales. Let's hit check. And if we scroll down, there's the data. Now, of course, at this point, you probably do something like promote the first rows or header rows, set your data types, all that good stuff. But let's test it and make sure that this dynamic discovery works. So I'll close and load this back out into a proper table. Let's zoom out a little bit. We've got 27 rows delivered from the query, starting with Francis and going all the way down to Eunice. Looking inside the text file that had 27 transactions, this goes all the way from Francis to Eunice. But let's look at the other file. Remember, this is the file that had 346 transactions. Now this starts at Francis and goes all the way down to Web. 
and it didn't start on row 18, instead it started on row eight. So I'll close the file. Let's go back into the query, right click edit. We'll go to our source step, double click the gear, and just point to the many sales file. Hit okay, go to the last step, starts with Francis. Notice there are 346 rows in this table. If we scroll down, we end on web. I'll close and load. So we had 27 rows, now we have 346 rows. So here's the core M code without any extra steps. We connect to the data file, we skip all of the top rows until we find the header, then we keep all of the top rows until we hit the footer. There are many ways to solve this problem, but I like this one. If you've got a way that you like, put it down in the comments. I'd love to see how you solve the same problem. Thanks again for watching, and remember at BCTI, the learning never stops.